most of you who've been with my channel for a while know that I haul my ATVs and side-by-side with this truck. This is a 2006 Cummins Turbo Diesel 5.9. I kept it in pretty good shape. It's done me well. I really haven't put that much money into it other than no, let's let's be honest. I put money into it. Uh, like four exhaust systems, like a lot of maintenance. People don't tell you that owning a diesel truck, it's expensive. I've had gas trucks. I've had this diesel truck for 14 years. 14 years. That's a lot of years to own a vehicle. So I know how much money I put into it because I got a lot of receipts. There comes a time where you got to think about selling this kind of stuff and. You know, I've kept this truck in pretty good shape, but it's it's getting up there. It's getting up there in age. It's getting up there in condition. You know, I got some rust starting on the box. I got some stuff going on. There's no exhaust on it right now. Not at all. There's just there's a dump coming off of the catalytic converter. So, well, it's come time to sell the truck. And by the time you see this video, relax. The truck's not available. I've traded it in. I'm going to show you what I'm going to get here in a minute. But it's going to give me a good opportunity to get into a situation where let's say you're a brand new side-by-side -side or an ATV owner. You get a new truck, you get a new ATV, a trailer, or you're just getting basically set up for the first time. There's some stuff that you need to know about setting your, your tow vehicle up for your first haul and to make sure you're doing it safely and correctly. So let me get this switched over and I'm going to show you exactly what you should be looking at. Hang tight. So enter the new vehicle, or in some cases it could be a new trailer, a new side-by-side, etc, etc. So you've got your ATV, you've got your side-by-side, -side, you've got your vehicle. The first thing you need to do is make sure that your vehicle is capable of towing the load that you want to carry. Your side-by-side, -side, the weight of the trailer, and the capacity of the truck and all of the occupants. Where to start is make sure that you go online and check out the towing rating of your specific vehicle. A vehicle like this, being a half ton truck, um, is nowhere near the towing capacity as what I had before my one ton diesel, so I had to make sure that when I was looking at vehicles, I had to look at things like axle ratios and uh, cab configurations and uh, ratings for the engine, for towing ratings. So that all comes into play. So make sure that's something that you do pay attention to. Then we got to look at things like weight of the trailer. We got to look at uh, weight of the side by side, weight of the cargo, anything that you're going to add to uh, weight wise, including yourself or passengers, your vehicle is going to be able to tow safely. All right. So now we're going to get into a little bit of the setup of the, your, uh, your truck and your trailer made it up together. So again, when you're choosing a vehicle, choosing a trailer, uh, to haul with, make sure that everything that you're purchasing is going to either match up with what you have now or you match everything up when you're buying new or used, doesn't matter. So this is a standard two inch receiver, you're going to find this on like 90% of half tons and you know uh, three quarter tons, one tons. Um, there's different classifications for hitches and stuff like that, again something to pay attention to. Um, you don't want to get a hitch that's too light, um, in my opinion it's never uh, it's always a good thing to go a little bit too heavy. Um, this hitch here is rated for somewhere like over the tow capacity of the truck. I think this is like a 10,000 pound class five hitch. Um, you know, don't quote me on that. These are all just kind of, you know, spurred off numbers here. But um, so first thing we're gonna do is I have a trailer receiver to go in. Um, so that's gonna be the, the hitch ball. Excuse me, this is a receiver. The hitch ball is what I gotta go in. Um, make sure your hitch ball lines up with your trailer in terms of size. Um, we'll go over that here in a minute. So I'm going to get this inserted in here. This was on my old diesel, so it's going to be important that I have to set everything back up again. This sits a little bit lower than my diesel, so I know there's going to be some adjustment. Your setup is definitely going to be different. There's different ways that you can take care of that kind of thing as far as height adjustment goes for uh, making sure your trailer's level. But I'm going to get everything hooked up, and we'll, uh, we'll see you in a minute.
That should be close enough. Now we're just going to lower this down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it out ahead and get it out on the flat so that I can adjust anything that I need to adjust. Make sure that it's not riding too low, riding too high. With this specific setup, I've got some different options that I can do. With um, the hitch itself, I can move it up and down here on this on this rack. And the same with this. Um, I've got some options here uh, to move this up and down. So there's lots of adjustment that I can work with here. You might have a different setup where you have either straight ball uh, that's too high, in which case you're going to have to look at something called a drop hitch. So a drop hitch is going to come down and then allow this part of the trailer, the tongue part of the trailer to rest a little bit lower on that ball, vice versa. If it's too low and you need it to raise it high, you're going to have to get one of those drop hitches and flip it upside down. Um, so there's some measurement involved in that, but anyway, I'm going to get the rest of this hooked up and we'll see where we're at. Well, actually, that is not bad at all. I was actually surprised on how close that was to the diesel. But what I want to see for sure is when I get the weight of the X3 on there, or in your case, whatever else you're going to be hauling, what that trailer is going to look like. So I'm going to bring it out here further in the driveway in a nice flat spot. I'm going to get the X3 started, fired up, warmed up. And I'm actually going to load it on the trailer, see what kind of squat we're looking at. And when I say squat, what I mean is right now, the only thing that's on the weight of the truck is the tongue of the trailer. And the, the weight of the trailer itself is kind of irrelevant because as it stands right now, there's no weight on that. That trailer weighs roughly around 1,500 pounds, uh, 15 or 1,600 pounds. I think it's around 1,600. So I did notice... The squat went down a little bit from where I had it unladen, so no weight on it whatsoever. The fender was right around here, so I lost probably about a quarter to a half inch. Um, not concerning. I'm also not towing anything here yet. But what I want to see is when I get the weight of the side-by-side -side or my tractor or anything like that. In fact, let's load the tractor. That weighs a little bit more than the side-by-side, -side, so let me do that. Um, I want to see what it's going to look like from here to here. If I'm losing too much if I'm losing too much space here and I'm starting to rest right on the bump stops, that's not going to be a very comfortable ride. So what I want to do in that case is switch over to a weight distribution hitch, which is another animal altogether, but what a weight distribution hitch essentially does is it lifts up on the tongue weight of the trailer a little bit and um, unladens the trailer and pushes some of the weight towards the front of the vehicle. You don't want to have too much weight close to the tongue or on the tongue. That's going to create an unstable ride and very dangerous to be on the road. Okay, so it was kind of hard to tell from your angle from the camera, but the further ahead I travel, the more squat I get on the truck. So now if I kind of do a little side-by-side -side comparison video to show you exactly where this was sitting before, probably around here-ish. Um, we're being very scientific here, by the way. So I did lose, I'm, I'm squatting further, so I did lose some ride height on the back end of the truck. From what I see, and just from experience of towing before, uh, many, many, many years of towing, I would be completely comfortable towing this without any weight distribution hitch. Is that the best idea to do? No. I would always suggest that if you're going to at least haul something that heavy, that weighs 2,500 pounds. I've got the rear tires loaded, I've got uh, 
uh, the weight of the loader on there, if you add a bucket, if you add the rotary cutter, you add anything like that, it's going to add more weight. So when it's all said and done, that is actually not a bad setup. I'll probably look into a weight distribution hitch because I need to haul my father's tractor. I don't haul this very much. I haul my X3, you know, it's a weekend warrior type thing, so I do haul that, which weighs less, probably five, seven, 700 pounds less than what that is. I think the weight on the X3 is around 1,680 pounds. So as it sits right now, you know, we got a 15, 1,600 pound, 16 foot, flat deck trailer 2500 pound tractor sitting on top could be a little bit more we're pushing several thousand pounds on this truck and the way it's sitting right now i'd be comfortable running it i am going to look into a distribution hitch for when i haul heavier um, but other than that those are the types of things that you need to worry about when you're putting together your package of your truck, trailer, side-by-side, etc. So, and also, when if you have enough room on your flat deck like this, if you have one, especially if you have a set of tandem axles, if you go further up to the front, it's going to create more tongue weight on the truck, and it's going to push the truck down further. The further back it is, it's going to uh, put weight on the back end of the trailer, and then it's going to cause the truck to rise in the rear which either or is really not good too much tongue weight on the truck and it's going to raise up too much weight on the off the front so then you're going to have lack of steering too little weight on the rear of the truck in terms of it's starting to lift up on the tongue and you have a lot of weight on the back end of the trailer it's going to lift up on the back end of the truck you're going to lose forward traction you're also going to lose stability back and forth so, and I did check underneath the truck. I'm actually nowhere near the bump stops. I probably got another four to five inches there. So we're completely good there. There's other al alternatives to a weight distribution hitch that you can look at. There's different, you know, thicknesses of bump stops. There's sumo springs and this and that. There's all kinds of different things out in the market. But the main thing is, is to be safe when you're setting up your truck and trailer. Make sure that you are using a machine capable i.e a vehicle capable of hauling what you have so i'm gonna call that good if there's any questions just leave them down below there's lots of research there's lots of other videos there's complete setups from you know um tip of the truck all the way to the butt of the trailer of how to set your vehicle up from scratch but these are just more so to make sure you guys are safe oh and the trails before you even get to the trails, because you can't get to the trails unless you get there safely. So, I hope this video helps somebody. Um, if, again, if there's any questions, just post down below. Um, I know I didn't cover three quarters of what needs to be covered, but again, general guidelines. Make sure you're safe out there. We'll see you out in the trail. Rag out.